Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for Him Sing. Um, we're really excited. Uh, please stand as you are able. We will start with hymn number 153 in your red hymnal, 153, It Came Upon the Midnight Clear. We will do verses 1, 2, and 4. faithful we'll do verses one two and four thank you
our next hymn is hymn number 144, O Little Town of Bethlehem. We will do, oh, I, I apologize. No, that's right, 144, Little Town of Bethlehem. We will do verses 1, 2, 3, and 4, all four verses in the change. sing today, hymn number 167, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Hymn 167.
this hymn singing today. Um, for other congregational music events, there is, of course, the family orchestra at the 5 o'clock service on Christmas Eve. Uh, there are more details online in the carillon. We hope you will join us. I will be conducting a pickup orchestra, which is you. And that will be very exciting for me. Um, thank you so much.
We receive the spirit of love candle on this third Sunday in Advent in honor of all the children of the world and in memory of the children who died a year ago yesterday, the children of Newtown, and with prayers for the children who felt and suffered on uh, Friday in Colorado, and with hope that all children of the world will be safe and will live in a world without violence and the threat of fear and violence. Amen. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, Be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become like a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become like a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway shall be there and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. May this prophecy of Isaiah be so. Amen.
Sunday of Advent, we continue reflecting on our theme, Simply Wait. Today's focus, anticipation, is one aspect of waiting. I wrote a poem reminiscent of one that Lawrence Ferlinghetti wrote 55 years ago called I Am Waiting. I used the poem's form and I also used a refrain, a beautiful refrain, which goes, I am waiting for a rebirth of wonder. So this poem is an homage to waiting and also to the poet Lawrence Ferlinghetti. Advent 2013, after Lawrence Ferlinghetti's I am waiting. I am waiting for my name to be called, and I am waiting for a rebirth of wonder. I am waiting for God to shed her grace on America, and I am waiting for the 99% to inherit their fair share. I am waiting for healthcare.gov to clean up its act, and for Democrats and Republicans to break bread together. I'm waiting for America to stop asking which is taller, the Trade Center or the Sears Tower, and ask instead how many people can we feed? And I am waiting for a rebirth of wonder. I am waiting for the Messiah, and I am waiting for Jews and Christians and Muslims to lie down together. I am waiting for America to see that God is not American and I am waiting for swords to be turned into plowshares and for all the trees of the field to clap their hands, and I am perpetually awaiting a rebirth of wonder. I am waiting for my appointment with God, for an end to slavery and hate crimes and gun violence. I am waiting for the kids of Oakland's Fremont High to tell Hamlet to be, and for the shortage of good teachers not to be. I'm waiting for a new faith that accepts all points of view, and I am waiting with the woman at the well and the good Samaritan and the lost sheep for a new rebirth of wonder. I am waiting for the messenger of peace, and I am waiting for the rebirth of the Bengal tiger and the blue whale. I am waiting for the whooping crane's return to Canada and the monarchs to Mexico. I am waiting for carbon levels to come down and for our planet to cool down and for storms to stop killing so many. And I am waiting for a new rebirth of wonder. I am waiting for the shadow of loneliness to give way, for love and sweetness to come again. And I am waiting for the spring rain to soften the hard cracked earth, for the ice to melt, for the backyard bullfrog to rise from the pond's muddy bottom, for the magnolia to flaunt her sexy stamens and pistols, and for Lawrence Ferlinghetti's poems to set my heart on fire in a new rebirth of wonder. I'm waiting for a many-breasted God to weep with me for our broken world. I am waiting to laugh at fear's grisly face and to welcome all new arrivals. I am waiting to wear the armor of light, and I am waiting at dawn and in the darkest night for the child's burning cry, and I am waiting perpetually and forever for a rebirth of wonder.
it's wonderful to be able to welcome you to this third Sunday of Advent, which in our congregation is Music Sunday. Music Sunday is always a little bit exciting because it's both creative, fantastic, and a little chaotic. And the first chaotic announcement I have to make is that someone's Prius, I read this, I'm so glad it's not my husband, Sam, there is a Toyota Prius by the entrance that is blocking Amari, our parking pastor's work. The uh, uh, license number is 6ANK764. So uh, perhaps during the passing of the peace, you'd like to leave and uh, take care of your Prius. <laughs> The third Sunday of Advent, sometimes people ask why is the candle on the third Sunday pink? And the tradition has it that the third Sunday is the Sunday when we are allowed to lift ourselves just a little bit out of a sense of waiting. Um, this, this Sunday we've named Anticipation. Uh, it is called the Candle of Joy, but I personally prefer my favorite story about the pink candle. And the candle is pink on the third Sunday because we are still waiting for a girl. I'm so glad all of you are here on this morning to experience worship and a time of song and fellowship together. I especially want to welcome those of you who are joining us by web this morning. It's great to have you along with us. As I look into the congregation, I see many faces of friends and of guests uh, that I haven't seen in a while, and I'm so glad that you are here this morning to celebrate this day with us. I'll be at the door following worship uh, this morning, and I'd love to greet each one of you by name, and I would appreciate the opportunity, if this is your first visit, for you to drop by and introduce yourself to me so that I may introduce myself to you and uh, invite you to come and share in the fellowship, community, and worship life of this congregation. We appreciate the opportunity as staff to pray for you throughout the week. You'll notice that in each one of your pews there are yellow cards, and we invite you, if you have a joy or a concern that you'd like to share with us on this day, to simply pick one up and let us know what is on your heart and mind so that we might pray for you. Simply drop the card in the offering plate following worship this morning. Also in each one of your pews this morning there are friendship pads. Will you pick one up and fill in the information you'd like to share with us? Pass it down the row and then back again. And notice who signed in so that when we pass the peace, we may use each other's names. Following worship this morning, there is coffee and a time of fellowship and sign-up time in our small assembly. Simply go out these doors and enter into the small assembly. You'll notice that lots of things are happening for Christmas. If you look inside of your order of service, you'll see plenty of opportunities to sign up. You may also drop those in the offering, uh, in the offering plate as it goes by you or in uh, the fellowship hour. I'm always reminded to tell you that the Cellar Thrift Shop is open, and this is a great day for shopping, and the Cellar Thrift Shop, I know, has the gift that you want to give, so won't you stop by this morning and buy it? And everything's half off, folks. And everything's half off, folks, so that's terrific. You'll also notice that there are, is an opportunity to uh, purchase a poinsettia for Christmas and also to bring cookies for the 22nd next week and also for Christmas evening, Christmas Eve. Please buy a wreath after worship from our wonderful Winthrop uh, Fellowship Group. This helps to raise money for Winthrop to uh, do their annual summer work camp. And uh, the wreaths are fabulous and smell so lovely and fragrant, and it helps a lot. Also, there are the Gifts of the World Alternative Gift Catalog that you may pick up this morning if you'd like to give the gift of an organization, supporting an organization in honor of someone in your life. It's a wonderful gift to give, and you may also purchase those or pick those up uh, as you enter into the small assembly. And Christmas Eve is coming. Won't you join the amazing family orchestra? and play your instrument at the 5 o'clock Christmas Eve service. Derek would so appreciate it. 
think about dusting off your old trombone or uh, a flute or whatever, you'd like to come and play and we'll have a fantastic orchestra and enjoy ourselves very much. So think about it. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, there was a new member class in our congregation and we received Victoria Purcell Gates as a new member. And Victoria, you're here this morning. I'd like to ask you to rise where you are so that we may greet you and learn a little bit about you. May I uh, just introduce the congregation to you? You were a member of FCCB in the 70s and 80s. She moved away after receiving her PhD and took her first academic position in the Midwest. Victoria is now retired and has come home after an active career as a researcher and professor in the United States and Canada. She lives with her husband in the Claremont Hills. Daughter Laura lives in England where she has a theater company. And Victoria believes that her son Michael heads up a data processing group in Denver and that he was the first live baby to serve as the baby Jesus and the manger gift Sunday in 1976. So we know how old Michael is and he started a great tradition. Thank you, Victoria. We greet you, we welcome you, and we extend our hand in fellowship to you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> We have more news this morning, and the yellow flower on the chancel celebrates the birth of Kobe to new grandparents, Chin Win and grandfather Phil Porter. <laughs> I never thought I'd see the day. <laughs> Phil is a grandfather. I love it. Phil, we're so happy for you and for Chin and for Chin's daughter, Anne. And you'll also notice, friends, that there is a white flower on our communion table that shares the vase with the beautiful yellow flower. This flower celebrates the life of Dr. David Rees. David died yesterday afternoon. David was senior minister of our congregation from 1978 to 1983. He uh, has been sick throughout the fall, and being both the valiant and very private person that he is, we haven't had an opportunity uh, to pray for him. We pray for him now, and we give thanks for his life. He was my pastor, and a person who ignited in me a call to Christian ministry. And I know that for many of you, he has been your pastor and your friend. It was so lovely to have him return to this congregation three years ago and share these past three years with us as a congregation member. We grieve his passing. And we share this grief, of course, with Helen and with daughters Sarah and Rebecca and their families. This has been uh, so sudden that plans uh, have not been made for how we will celebrate David's life, but as those plans materialize, we will be sure to share this time with you. I also on this day want to uh, extend prayers uh, to Terry Jackson as he begins treatment, and to all of you who are waiting, grieving, holding those who are waiting and grieving in this season. May God be with you and may God hold you and care for you in this time. Let our worship continue with thanksgiving for all graces, all life, and with God's compassion. I'd like to invite the children to come up and sit on the stairs with me, if you will. Come on up. Come on down and have a seat. Just come sit right up here. Yeah, welcome. It's great to have you all here this morning. Yeah, everyone get settled. Find just the right place. Yeah. So, you know, I've always felt a little bad that I only speak one language. You know, when I was in... Um, junior high and high school, I studied French. I know some of you speak French, um, but I don't remember very much of it. I do speak uh, several made-up languages, like uh, but I don't think that really counts. 
But just recently, I realized that actually I do speak another language. I speak the language of music. I like to sing, and I, like, I played the clarinet for a long time. I've played uh, the piano a little bit. I played organ in two rock bands when I was in junior high. And I'm going to sing with the choir a little bit later, and I've composed a few songs. So I, I, I realize that's like another language, like music is another language. And you may have noticed that we're doing a lot of music this morning. Did you notice that? That we're singing a lot of songs and we've got the organ going and the piano and the violin. Everything is going on this morning because it's Music Sunday. And one of the reasons we're doing this is that the mystery of God is so big that one language is not enough to wrap around God. So we have the language of music to help us have our own experiences and to be able to experience God in exciting ways. You know, words just aren't enough. And you think about it, like let's say you had a birthday. And so everyone got together and they said, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear friend, happy birthday to you. It's just not quite the same, is it? That if we sing it, can we just sing all that together? Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear friend. Happy birthday to you. See, it's just better with the music, isn't it? It's just, it's more exciting, it's more fun, and it says something to the person that we're singing to. It just, you know, probably just makes them a little bit happier. Now, I'm going to invite my new friend Natalie to come up. Oh, she's right over there already. And do you see what she has in her hand? What is that that she's... It's a violin, and, we, and she played for us a little bit earlier. And Natalie's going to help me out a little bit to show, to show us all that music creates lots of different experiences. We have all different kinds of music, and it makes, it, make, makes us feel in different ways. So she's going to play a little, a little bit, and we're going to see how that affects us. So if you notice that song, it's kind of a slow song, and it's quiet, and maybe even was a little bit sad, maybe a little bit was, sad, too. I was going to say a little bit sad. You, yeah, you were going to say that, too, a little bit sad. So, you know, that kind of music made us maybe feel just a little bit sad or, or something like that. Now, she's going to play another song, and we're going we're gonna to see how that makes us feel. Wow, what was that like? Was that, that wasn't sad music, was it? It's kind of like, um, it's kind of a little bit um, like somebody if they challenge you in the old days to a duel. Um, like, yeah, if you're going to have a duel, that would be music, good music for a duel, wouldn't it? Yeah. Or, or exciting. Someone said exciting. So that music, like, oh, it was exciting and maybe even a little scary and like, oh, we might have a duel. Yeah, that's good. All right, so we're going to do one more, and we're going to see what that's like. Doesn't that, like, make you want to dance? I think she should play it again. I think we all should just, you know, in our seats, just dance a little bit. Let's do it again. Can you dance a little bit? Yeah. So, so you see how music, the language of music, it speaks, it says a lot of things to us, doesn't it? It's happy. Yeah, it's happy now, and we don't have to worry about that duel. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so just, I just I invite you to, to think about how, where music pops up in your life and to think how it makes you feel and all that. And to remember that God is a big thing too, and all these feelings that we have are also part of our experience of God. So can we say a little prayer? Oh, first of all, can we thank Natalie for doing that? Thank you, Natalie. 
So let's, let's say a little prayer. Dear God, thank you for our ability to make sounds and to have instruments and to join our voices, to have different ways of feeling and have different ways of experiencing you. Amen. Amen. All right, so you guys can go off to your classes, and I'd like to invite everyone else to stand and greet each other with a sign of peace.
this morning is Matthew chapter 11 verses 2 through 11. John, who was in prison, heard what Christ was doing and sent his own disciples to him with this message. Are you the one who is to come or are we to expect some other? Jesus answered, go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind recover their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are made clean, the deaf hear, the dead are raised to life, the poor are hearing the good news, and happy is the man who does not find me a stumbling block. When the messengers were on their way back, Jesus began to speak to the people about John. What was the spectacle that drew you to the wilderness? A reed bed swept by the wind? No? Then what did you go out to see? A man dressed in silks and satins? Surely you must look in palaces for that. But why did you go out? To see a prophet? Yes, indeed, and far more than a prophet. He is the man of whom the scripture says, Here is my herald, whom I send on ahead of you and he will prepare your way before you. I tell you this, never has there appeared on earth a mother's son greater than John the Baptist, and yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. May God add a blessing to the reading of this word. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for this Advent? How do you wait in your life? We've already heard a beautiful poem from Joanne. I share this poem with you now from Jan Richardson. Blessing for Waiting. Who wait for the night to end, bless them. Who wait for the night to begin, Bless them, who wait in the hospital room, who wait in the cell, who wait in prayer. Bless them, who wait for news, who wait for the phone call, 
who wait for the word, who wait for a job, a house, a child, bless them, who wait for one who will come home, who wait for one who will not come home, bless them, who wait with fear, who wait with joy, who wait with peace, who wait with rage, who wait for the end, who wait for the beginning, who wait alone, who wait together, bless them, who wait without knowing what they wait for or why, bless them, who wait when they should not wait, who wait when they should be in motion, who wait when they need to rise, who wait when they need to set out. Bless. I finally got there and it was in the middle of the rain and as we entered into this room these 50 young men were waiting for us, some more eager than others. And as we entered the room, got out of the rain and sat down, they looked at us and said, we have been waiting for you. And they began to tell us their stories one by one of how they made it to Indonesia and were so hoping that they would one day be able to make it to Australia. How their parents, because their parents loved them and were so worried about them, had set them free in the middle of the night uh, to walk from uh, their homes, hopefully, to freedom. So these young men have been set forth into the world. It was a cold and damp moment in that room, but as their stories began to be told, and one by one, the stories uh, came to life in these young men, many of whom speak English, many of whom have little tiny recorders, uh, many of whom uh, feel to me like they could be sitting in our pews this morning, telling their stories to us. The room came alive. And we had been told when we walked in there, don't take their pictures. But I have to tell you, I snuck one. And as I did, the flash went off. And the eyes of these young men brightened up. And then somebody else took a picture, and somebody else. And before we know, knew it, these young men were walking in front of the camera and smiling and presenting themselves to us. And there was joy in the room. And then someone else turned on a very little music device that they had, and there was some dancing. And there was so much excitement and gladness in the room and light. And in that moment, I thought, this is an Advent moment. This is a moment that we all share. This moment happens in our own lives. When we tell our stories, when we receive each other, when we can look at each other and be able to say, I've been waiting for you. I'm so glad that you're here. And when we share our music. I felt in that time and in that visit that what happened is that somehow hope was ignited. Hope was ignited in those young men that maybe life doesn't end in that urban refugee center in Indonesia. Maybe there is more to their lives. I pray that it will be so. Hope is ignited. May God, in this season, ignite hope in you so that you may share that hope with someone else. And may God, who ignites hope, ignite hope in the world. Amen. update to what's in the program. I'm Alex, this is Julie Greer, Greg Beatty, Patty Contaxis, and Michelle McGuire. It only has two names in there, one of them isn't here, so now you know.
I came home like a stone and I fell happy into your arms these days of dust which we Sons, I think Alex might be part of the reincarnation. <laughs> Let us pray. Gracious God, while we are waiting, come. You are a giver of all good gifts and wonderful surprises. This Advent season reminds us again and again of your continuing promise to come to us even in the midst of our own impatience, our waiting, our anxiety. 
We are still learning to hope in your promise. And we are still learning that you always share your best with us. Nothing on our Christmas list comes close to the gift of your love, your light, and your hope coming, arriving among us soon. We come today to thank you for the joys and the tears of this past week. And we come to thank you even for those things for which we forget to be thankful. For warm homes in the midst of winter cold, and for our own warm, large assembly, and for those winter night beds in our large assembly for so many in Berkeley this past week for the celebration of the life of Nelson Mandela, and for his long walk, and now for the long ride to his birthplace where he is buried today. And we remember our friends in South Africa today, the Harrisons, and the good people of Rondebosch United Church, and their pastor, Robert Steiner. We pray for those imprisoned unjustly throughout the world, and for those in refugee centers stuck and unable to move forward. We remember them. We remember them on this Advent morning, and we pray for your mercy to arrive and for release to be granted. We give thanks for the passage of the bipartisan budget bill in the House this week and for the quiet and constant hope that our leaders will learn that working together for good is a lot more fun than remaining unfriendly and unloving across the aisle. And we are thankful this week for those who have been working on our health care rollout and a better registration system. We continue to pray that health care will be made available to every American, no matter their wealth or their ability. And we are thankful on this week for Pope Francis and for all religious leaders. We are grateful that Pope Francis has given to the world a fresh and clear-eyed example of what it means to be a person of faith, one who is humble, generous, faithful, and remarkably compassionate in the midst of a system that could demand judgment and distance. May we continue to see in him and in all of us, a deeper love, a stronger wisdom that grows from the depth of our willingness to be servant leaders in the name of the one who came to guide, to save, and to heal. We raise up to you also the events of our own lives in this past week for church retreats and holiday parties and life together with family and friends. We thank you for those who care, for the ways that open when the door seems shut, and for the gift of forgiveness, both human and divine. And we ask on this day for your guiding presence for all those who suffer and are held in the bonds of sorrow, we pray especially today for David Rees and for his family that you might hold them in a time of such loss, that you might be with them, that you might instill in them and all of us gratitude, gratitude for love, gratitude for life together, gratitude for this amazing gift of life with each other. And now we come to you in words that we know so well. And with those words, as we speak them, may we reinvest so that our hope is ignited and so that our faith is renewed. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Of this Sunday and, and next at the 11 a.m. service, members of the Outreach Mission and Service Ministry will be introducing you to the six organizations we have chosen this year for the Christmas offering. Many of you may have already received a letter and you have the opportunity to participate in this offering either today and the envelopes are in your pews, next Sunday or during the Christmas Eve services. You also have other opportunities to give online or send a check in the mail. Um, today, Janet McDonald, Tim Speck, and I will be sharing a little bit about three of the organizations, and next week you'll hear more about the other three. The three we'll talk about today are Médecins Sans Frontières, or Doctors Without Borders, East Bay Sanctuary Co Covenant, and Yay. Doctors Without Borders is an international medical organization founded over 40 years ago in France. In 1999, the organization won the Nobel Peace Prize for its humanitarian work around the world. It's worked in over 60 countries to bring impartial medical care to people whose survival is threatened by violence, neglect, or catastrophe. Most recently, Doctors Without Borders has responded to the Syrian crisis by delivering medical care to victims of the Civil War both inside the country and in the many refugee camps outside the borders of Syria. Doctors Without Borders was one of the first humanitarian organizations to arrive with support and care for the victims of the deadly typhoon in the Philippines and is now responding to the consequences of the emergent civil conflict in the Central African Republic. We know they will use our support effectively and feel deeply grateful for the care and support their staff and medical personnel bring to so many in need. And now Tim will tell you a little bit about Ye. It doesn't take much imagination to picture the need of youth that have no home, rigid weather, but Ye, Youth Emergency Assistance and Housing, is their only hope. The overnight shelter opened late November for the season and has a full from the start. Many of the youth, ages 18 to 25, are kids that have been emancipated from foster homes and have no place to go. FCCB has been a partner with YE since its start 11 years ago. One of our ministry teams continues to prepare hot meals to the shelter, most recently at Thanksgiving. Funds from our Christmas offering will help with much needed supplies blankets, socks, shoes, winter wear, plus counseling and supervisory services, not to mention heat and light. EA is the only agency in Berkeley serving the, this population of youth and works the year round to help them transition into more permanent housing and stability. At the heart is building relationships. East Bay Sanctuary Covenant was started in 1982 by five local congregations and focused on helping refugees from Central America. Although Central American refugees still are their predominant clients, they now serve refugees from 51 countries. Their two biggest program areas are refugee rights and community development and education. Through these programs, they provide low-cost or free legal services for refugees and immigrants, leadership and informational workshops on a variety of topics, referrals for housing, jobs, and education, and ESL and civics classes. They also help educate non-refugees about refugee issues and work to overcome the situations in other countries, especially Haiti, that cause their citizens to emigrate. Some of the things that I have especially enjoyed about serving on the Ministry of Outreach this year have been visits to our meetings by some of the organizations that have received our grants. East Bay Sanctuary Covenant was one, and the knowledgeable and articulate staff member who had previously volunteered with them before that 
had been a client herself, having come to the U.S. as a child and needing immigration legal services. She is now a Cal graduate and a U.S. citizen. To support the work of these organizations and the other three you will hear more about next week, please give generously to the Christmas offering. We now invite the ushers to come forward to receive this morning's offering. hungers satisfied and dreams fulfilled, for songs lifted and voices heard. 
We trust you to accomplish good among us through the sharing of these gifts and the recommitment of our lives. Help us to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Amen. Now go and sing a new song unto God. Let your hearts be ignited with hope so that others' hearts may live with hope. And may God, who ignites your hope, burn with joy, with peace, with gladness in your hearts. Amen. <laughs> <laughs>